Five Minute Crafts, what have you got me doing? Five Minute Crafts have just released a terrible lock picking video and I know they do it for content like this where people are reacting to their awful, awful lock picking videos. But I can't help it, it's so bad I just have to cover it. And the people's comments on this video are just as hilarious. Um, and I know I'm falling into their trap. I know that I'm doing exactly what they want. I'm propagating this just by doing a reaction video to it, but I, I can't help it. I've fallen into their trap. I think we just need to go through this video bit by bit, see what is actually good and what is BS. So the first thing they do after unwrapping what seems to be a completely pointless chain affixed to nothing is they start to take the heads off a box of safety matches. I had to remove the heads of a whole bunch of matches. This left me with a load of match head powder and then I just needed to source an equally rubbish cast iron lock. Hmm. You know as well as I do that this is not going to work but we will try it just to see if anything will come of this apart from a load of smoke and me needing to air this office out by a lot and a load of grit inside this lock which I probably will never ever get out so Let's just pack that keyway full of this powder, really get it down in there. Here we go. Five minute crafts, what have you got me doing? Some burnt powder on the lock, let's see if it actually works. It's certainly not open. It's probably gonna go up the lock, but let's see if, no, it works fine, but it did not pick this lock open at all. And why would it? Here is a bigger version of the same lock and you can see that why would it work? There's nothing in here to make this work. All it would do is briefly heat up the keyway and make a load of dirt inside the lock, which could stop it from actually working. It's not going to open up the lock in any possible way. Just in case some of you were wondering, would more fire work? Three days later. Well, this has been going on for about two minutes. I'm surprised I haven't run out of gas and no, the lock has not magically sprung open. Now they decide to pick on a poor defenseless little combination lock like this one. And this is such a cheap tinny lock, just like the one in the video. Let's lock it back up, give it a twist and see whether we can force it open with a spanner. So I have my two wrenches. Um, this actually probably will work. So uh, let's give this a bit of a go. It's open, yeah, there we go. All we found out is we can actually break a lock with a couple of wrenches, but most people know that already, and unless you want a completely damaged lock, it might not be exactly what you're aiming for. Next, they actually try a bit of lock picking, but they do it in the worst possible way ever, not using a turning tool, just two lock picks. I tried to see what lock picks they were, I couldn't. It just looked like some kind of half diamond and maybe a hook. So yeah, let's give that a go. What lock do they have? Well, they actually have one of these clear see-through plastic padlocks just with a rubber shroud around it. And the worst thing about this, these are the easiest locks to pick ever anyway. So they could have just learned to pick this lock for the purposes of this film, but they didn't. So I have the same lock they used. I've got two super cheap Chinese picks like they used, and we're going to go in and do the two pick method. Oh, it didn't open. What a surprise. Let's try that again, but with the tension tool. One turning tool, one lock pick, go, go in, and there we go, the lock is open. Was it that hard, five minute crafts, was it? This next one they do is absolutely hilarious, and I think it shows a massive misunderstanding about the technique of using super glue to remove a broken key. Somehow, they're showing a key that's broken at the head of the key, rather than near the bow where it's likely to break. I actually had to use some pliers to sort of snip this and twist this off. This is really hard to do. Why would a key ever break there? It just wouldn't. Also, why would I need to glue this back on? I could just turn the lock like that. I mean, there's so much of the key left. You, you don't need to glue it on. What's more likely to happen is you have a key which has been dropped or fatigued and you put this in and you turn it one last time and it just snaps off. That is how a key breaks inside a lock. One way to get the broken key out is to grab it with some pliers and just pull. Can you super glue it though? Let's find out. I'm gonna put a thin amount of this on the broken part of the key. I'm going to very carefully align this with the broken part of the key and wait until 
it sort of sets. Three weeks later. The glue on this key head has set now. And remember, they weren't trying to extract the key. They were trying to open the lock. So let's try this. I imagine the amount of torque on this glue isn't going to work, but let's try it. No, mm, it's still a bit tacky. I wonder though if we could push the key in further and just try to use any part of this key bow to try and turn the lock open. Yes, we still can. So it's possible as long as there's a little bit of key left to still open your lock, but it doesn't help you remove the broken key. I have heard of people using super glue to extract the key from the lock, but it will all depend on what the break is like on the key, how big the key is, uh, how loose the springs are inside the lock, all those kind of things. So uh, yeah, what they're doing is wrong, but it's partially right at the same time. <sighs> What's next? Oh, great, they're using acid. Right, hold on. Discus lock, check. Dropper, check. Safety gloves, check. Safety goggles, check. Now, where did I put my acid? Oh, here I go. Some hydrochloric acid. Clearly, if you're gonna do this, do it in a safe environment, fully ventilated, using the correct protective equipment. And when I say if you're gonna try this, don't, just don't try this. Do not try this. I've already spent four pounds of my own money on a cheap lock I don't mind attempting to damage. I wanna test this acid out, so I've got an antacid tablet here. Let's drop some acid onto it. Yep, just as I thought, nice and fizzy. Another thing, I've worked in labs, I've seen a lot of different acids, I've never seen one that looked like the one they're using. Probably, because it isn't. Okay, let's take some of this acid, and we're gonna put loads of it into this lock, and we're just gonna leave it for an hour and see what happens. It's probably just gonna leak all the way around the inside and I'll probably have to throw this poor lock away afterwards, but um, let's not be shy. Right, that is so much acid, it's unbelievable. One eternity later. It's been an hour. I've got the key ready, but remember we won't need a key. The acid will have eaten its way through the internals of the lock, right? So we should just be able to open this. Yeah, that didn't work. Does the key still work? Yeah. This next part of the video though, is really interesting because they get it pretty close to being right. They're looking at fingerprints on a touchpad of an electronic lock, or it could be any sort of touchpad mechanical combination lock. And they're writing down the possible combinations of the numbers they find, and they go through them on the keypad to see which one opens it up. This one is sort of real and it displays a security flaw which you should probably know about and that is where you have dirty or worn numbers or buttons on your combination locks. So I have colored this in for sake of demonstration but you can see that not all the numbers are shiny. Some of them have been dulled, let's say by constant pressing with dirty fingers. I've also seen worn buttons, cracked buttons, all sorts of things on locks like this. And this sort of wear on buttons happens all the time. Look at my TV remote where the power button and the source button have been used so much that the print is starting to come off. So it is actually possible to look at a combination device and see which buttons, so here one, two, seven, and eight, are being used the most and derive a set of combinations that fit all those numbers. And I've actually written them down here. So for numbers one, two, seven, and eight, we have 24 combinations. So for this particular model, you wouldn't need to have a particular combination. You just have to hit the buttons in any order to get the open. But a lot of electronic locks and some mechanical locks do need an exact set of figures. This next one is amazing. It's probably my favorite thing they've done. They, they've got hold of one of these Ford Tib lock picks designed for a very specific lock. I've got one here. There we go, it's like a disc detainer lock. It takes a very oddly shaped key, it goes in. You might see these on some car doors in Europe and it opens the lock up. The pick tool itself is supposed to go into the lock. Just have a look about how they're using this tool in the video. Can you see the problem? Yeah, they're trying to use the tool with most of the picking tip on the outside. Once you remove this little pin, 
all of these little picking tips move independently. They're supposed to be moving the internals of the lock. It's not even a hard tool to use. Insert the tool, take out the pin, turn everything until it reaches its stopping point, and then look, it opens. It's really not hard, and clearly another faked part of their video. This last bit is absolutely hilarious. They can't open the door after all of that work, after all of that fakery. Still can't open the door, so what do they choose? They choose some expanding foam filler. Look at this, it says bond and fill. This is supposed to fill in the gaps and make sure there's a nice tight seal. This won't actually open your door, it'll just make sure that it won't open, but it will be nicely insulated. And after all that, just look at the way they're walking. I can only assume that they were just desperate to use a toilet on the other side of the door and it was just too late. I mean, uh, I mean, five minute crafts have to stop. I know these videos are funny and of course they go viral, but so many people believe it. The comments on that video bear it out. People genuinely believe what they're seeing. And uh, at best it's funny, but at worst it could be sort of dangerous in some people's hands when they end up uh, damaging a lock that they rely on or, or, or somebody else's lock, which is even worse. Anyway, look, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, leave a like. If you've got any comments on this video, the five minute crafts one, drop them below. I do read them all. I'd love to hear what you think, especially on this video down below. If you haven't subscribed and want to see more content like this, please subscribe. It really helps my channel out and I'll see you all next time.